This episode of Fine Scale Modeler's new product rundown features Tacom's King Tigers, Aoshima's OH-1 Ninja, Zvezda's Kruzenstern, Italeri's M113 ACAV, and Edward's Harrier and the Sound of Silence. I'm Aaron Skinner. Welcome to New Product Rundown, Fine Scale Modeler's twice monthly show where the delightful Elizabeth Nash and I show you the latest kits and other stuff. Our first subject is Tacom's 135th scale King Tiger, or more accurately, King Tigers. Yeah. Are you done yet? Yes. <laughs> really? I'm Aaron Skinner. Welcome to New Product Rundown, Fine Scale Modeler's twice monthly show where the delightful Elizabeth Nash and I show you the latest kits and other stuff. And tell you why they rock. Our first subject today is Tacom's 135th scale King Tiger, or more accurately, King Tigers. <laughs> really? That's right. Tacom has released kits of both the early Porsche turret and the later production Henschel turret. Now that naming convention isn't exactly right, nor for that matter is King Tiger quite right. But let's forget about nomenclature and get down to styrene tacks. What do these kits look like? The Holland turrets feature Zimmerit molded on, which is a nice touch in itself. But what really sets these kits apart from other Tiger twos is the provision of comprehensive interiors. Inner side walls feature molded wiring, equipment, and stowage. Under the floor are structural and mechanical elements. Full length torsion bars reach across the lower hull and mate with alternate road wheel arms. Outstanding bolt and rim detail mark the road wheels, drive sprockets, and idlers. Plastic individual link tracks provide the King Tiger's traction. Up front in the driver's position are a seat, controls, and a large transmission. In the back is an engine complete with heads, manifolds, plumbing, and wiring. Detailed walls separate the engine compartment from the radiators and fighting compartment. The radiators have open fans and chutes. Drive shafts run under the floor of the fighting compartment to connect the engine to the transmission. The compartment has ammunition for the main and machine guns. The engine deck and crew hatches can be posed open to display the detailed interior. Nicely molded Zimmerit extends to more body parts and the turret. The main gun is mostly molded as a single piece with separate parts for the muzzle brake and mantlet. Inside the turret, the gun's breech ammunition handling, recoil mechanism, and sight are included. Other turret details include seats, rotation equipment, coaxial machine gun, ventilators, and more. Clear parts supply periscopes and light lenses. The engine grills are photo etched brass and many fit into plastic frames. The same material provides brackets for equipment and ammunition and the aft end of the rounds. The majority of the decals go on the rounds. There are also dials for the driver's instruments and stencils for the gun and other equipment. Decals in the Henschel kit supply markings for two 505th heavy tank battalion tanks with the jousting knight on the turret. The Porsche kit has decals for the 503rd Heavy Tank Battalion vehicle in France and a tank from the Feldhorn Halle Battalion in Hungary. Both kits have extensive painting instructions, including a separate sheet with detailed images of sections and components with references to ammo of Mickey Manez colors. Given the amount of detail in these kits and the density of the instructions, these look like top-notch King Tigers. Yeah, I can't wait to see them built. The second kit on our agenda today is Aoshima's 172nd scale OH-1 Ninja. Yeah, more properly known as the Omega, this Japanese designed and built observation helicopter entered service with the Japanese Self-Defense Force in 2001. Two crew fly the chopper in a tandem cockpit and the Ninja can carry up to four air-to-air -air missiles in, on stub wings. The airframe parts of this all-new kit feature fine recessed and raised detail. It's first rate and should look terrific under paint and washes. Separate crew hatches on the long clear canopy can be posed open. Clear parts are also provided for the lights under the fuselage and the HUD. The two-place cockpit has seats with side armor plates, controls, and instrument panels with shrouds. Decals provide the dials and side console details. The main rotor head incorporates half of each blade's base, so the join should be sturdy. The main rotor blades have molded detail, taper tips, and trim tabs, but no droop. There's plenty of detail in the rotor hub and the shaft. Some of that will be hidden after the fuselage is buttoned up, but you can display it by leaving the separate hatches open. Structural elements and avionics grace the interiors of the open bays. The horizontal stabilizers and stub wings have nicely molded surface detail. Fuel tanks and missile launchers can be hung under the wings. The Ninja's unique tail rotor is secured with a pin. The engines have one-piece intakes and detail exhausts. The kit includes optional landing gear legs to show the oleos compressed on the ground or extended in flight. They can be replaced on the model thanks to polycaps inside the fuselage. Polycaps also let the siding equipment mounted above the cockpit move. Pin serve as axles for the wheels. D 
Decals provide national insignia, serial numbers, and a lot of optional numbers for tricolor camouflage ninjas. The painting directions have a couple of interesting red and white and blue and white options also. Paint callouts throughout the instructions reference GSI Creos colors, and the kit includes a small sheet of color photos of a real OH1. Good instructions and nice molding should make this a trouble for build. Yeah, I wasn't familiar with the Ninja before Aosho announced the kit, but it's an attractive helicopter and should look great on a shelf next to other modern choppers. Next, our first sailing ship. As far as you can remember. Really? Next, our first sailing ship. Zvezda's 1 200th scale Cruisenstern. This graceful four mast bark was built in the 1920s and still sails with the Baltic Academy of Fisheries. The full hull model is split along the keel. The long halves have plate and porthole details. The hull is finished with strakes and props. The decks have fine planks molded on, and there are inserts under them to brace the masts. The one-piece masts are perfectly round with minimal mold seams, as are the yards. Small items such as the lifeboat containers, wheels, racks, bollards, and more look terrific, cleanly molded with no flash and tiny attachment points. Superstructure walls have finely molded hatches and ventilators. Even the solid chain looks pretty spiffy. The ship is designed to be shown with its full complement of sails out. They are provided in thin white plastic with mild billowing. Main, jib, and spirit sails are provided. A black sprue provides the rope ladders to access the sails. And a diagram shows how to run the thread rigging. A small decal sheet provides Russian flags, hull names and stripes, displacement markings, and some placards. Another unusual subject from Zvezda and beautifully done. Yeah, it could be the basis for a detailed replica or even a good first sailing ship. Next, we have Italeri's 135th scale M113A cab. This upgunned armored personnel carrier served in Vietnam. This is an update of Italeri's M113 that's been around since the 1980s. The lower hull is a box. The road wheels, idlers, and drive sprockets are cleanly molded with sharp hubs and bolts. The rear hatch and fording plate have detail on both sides. The separate road wheel arms are keyed for alignment, and Lincoln length tracks finish the suspension. The drivers and troop compartments abound with details including seats with cushions, controls, fuel tanks, and grab handles. The A-cab's commander's hatch is joined by some stowage. That sprue and the M60 positions on the roof appear to have been produced by Academy. An optional fording plate is included. Decals provide markings for four U.S. Army M113s in Vietnam with colorful artwork. I especially like the Sgt. Pepper's version. This is another nice release that should be a fun build. We'll be right back after this message. Hi, Mark Savage here at the Fine Scale Modeler Laboratories, where we're developing a signature fragrance for men, Old Sprue. Unfortunately, finding a formula that captures the essence of bottling without causing a rash has proven especially difficult. We have a more subtle way to get our odor, build more models. We can help with a subscription to Fine Scale Modeler. So call or log on now to start building better models and smelling good too. Finally, let's take a quick look at a couple of neat Edward releases. First up, the limited edition Harrier. The heart of this kit is Hasegawa's really nice 148 scale GR7-9. The basic plastic parts have fine recessed panel lines and plenty of features and options. Among them, movable nozzles, posable canopy, and optional leading edge root extensions. Typical of Edward's limited edition kits, there's color photo etch for the instrument panels and seat. More photo etch brass dresses up the walls plates between the fuselage and horizontal stabilizers, and more. There's also a beautiful resin ejection seat with separate cushions. And stunning resin wheels, including outriggers with new forks. Pre-cut masks will help in painting the canopy and wheels. Cartograph decals provide markings with stencils for six Royal Air Force Harriers, including some colorful anniversary schemes, an Iraq warfighter, and one in neat looking winter camouflage. I'm a huge Harrier fan, and this is a terrific basic kit, dressed up with nice details and great decals. The Sound of Silence is not only Simon and Garfunkel's greatest song, it's also the latest Edward kit from Edward. The box art shows an encounter between a North Vietnamese MiG-21 and a U.S. Marine A-4. Edward's 148th scale kit features its own magnificent MiG-21 PFM with fine recessed panel lines on the gray plastic parts. There's plenty of detail in the cockpit and engine. 
and photo etched for the instrument panels, seat belts, wing fences, and landing gear. The Skyhawk is Hasegawa's beautiful kit with fine recessed detail on the major airframe parts. The cockpit detail is enhanced with a brass and resin seat and photo etched metal panels, belts, pedals, and more. The kit has posable flaps and slats, speed brakes, boarding ladder, full length intakes, and exhaust. Masks are provided for both fighters' canopies and wheels. Cartograph decals provide markings for a MiG-21 from the 921st Fighter Regiment of the Vietnamese People's Army Air Force in 1968 with a terrific splotchy camouflage. And an A4E from VMA 311 Tomcats at July from 1967 to 1970. This limited edition kit comes with this A2 size print of Japanese artist Koeki Shigeo's box art. With only a thousand of these available, get them while you can. It's hard to beat the value of two complete 148th scale kits, details, and the print. Indeed. Look for workbench reviews of the King Tiger and the Ninja in upcoming issues of Fine Scale Modeler Magazine. And you can see more new products in the November issue on sale now. Thanks for visiting FineScale.com. I'm Aaron Skinner. And he'll say anything. More properly known as the Omega, this Japanese designed and built observation helicopter entered service with the Japanese Self Defense Force in 2001. All right. <laughs> Fascinating. <laughs>